Hello class, this is a review of quiz number one for MGS 3100, the spring 2010 session with Philip Seagraves. So we had a version A and then we had uh, three other versions, a B, C, and a D. The number indicated here is for test version A and the other test versions uh, were, uh, will all be question that is in the parentheses. So in the first question we had an influence diagram as a visual aid for brainstorming and planning spreadsheet models, and that is true. Uh, question number two, again that's five on the other test forms, is one advantage of simulation is that you can be sure of getting the best answer every time. That is false. That is actually the objective of an opti optimization model, not a simulation. Uh, question number three, um, again, number six on the other test forms, event probabilities can be estimated for simulation for all of these sources except influence diagrams. Influence diagram is a planning tool, but you're going to go to one of these other sources, ask experts, use history, use your own experience, or use probability distributions to get the probabilities that will be used in a simulation. An influence diagram, diagram helps you understand the situation and determine where you would even put in the probabilities. And our next question, which is number four, is a break-even, a pretty straightforward break-even uh, calculation. In this case, the break-even is given to us, and we're to calculate the variable cost per unit. In this case, we have a break-even of 650, a fixed cost of 1,000, selling price of 5, and we subtract out our variable cost. So solving for this equation, we come up with a variable cost of $3.46, $3.46, which is choice D. So again, if you have some questions, just pause it here, take a look at this formula, and just kind of go back to your algebra skills, and uh, should be able to walk through that one pretty easily. All right, question number five. The break-even point is a quantity that when produced and sold will yield a profit of zero. That is true. A. Number six. All data inputs used in a spreadsheet model should be organized in a separate data section in the spreadsheet. That is true. You want to keep all of your data inputs in one section all together and avoid having those scattered all over your spreadsheet and having data mixed inside of formulas and things like that. You want to keep that in one area. Question number seven. Although a model may never be used, the process of building a model is still beneficial. And that, of course, is true. We talked about that many times in class. It's in the book, in the notes. Which of the following, now we're on question eight, which of the following are not viewed as advantages of simulation? We have A, B, C, D, and E here. And A quickly should jump out at you. Simulations can be used to optimize the goal of interest for the decision maker. This is optimization. It actually says it right here in the question. There was a lot in the text that defined the difference between simulation and optimization. All of these others are certainly advantages of simulation. Question number nine, a model is where some data are not known, a model where some data is not known with certainty and whose uncertainty is captured by probabilities is probabilistic. Actually even gave you part of the answer right there. Stochastic, if you remember, was random. So uh, parts of the uh, parts of the answer are even right here in the question. So I mean, in the uh, parts of the question right here in the answer. These others are really different concepts and not related to uh, whether we have um, entirely random or un or non-random information. Particularly, we have our inferential and deductive models are kind of a different concept altogether. And question number 10, which of the following is a model? And of course, as we go through these, you'll see that it's all of the above. Every one of these is a model. You're modeling profits, or you're modeling a program, or, or a piece of equipment, or even a car in the case of a, of a clay model. And then number 11, we have sources of modeling failure include all of the following except. Um, and again, all of these things uh, are, are both from discussions we had in the text. and Using a use of a prototype is certainly not going to be a reason that a model would fail. In fact, a, a prototype is is often the result of of good modeling, um, or the model itself may be the prototype in certain cases. And we have in this case a pretty straightforward uh, breakdown problem. We have a number of breakdowns that can happen in a day: a zero, one, or two. 
and we have various probabilities and then we have random numbers that are generated and when we plug those random numbers um, again you probably didn't have to do this even with a table but you certainly could have we have the probabilities and then the random number ranges remember these stack on top of each other after 50 it goes from 51 to 80 we did this in class a couple of times and when we look at the random numbers there was day two had two breakdowns day eight had two breakdowns and day ten so we had three out of ten so that would give us our answer of thirty percent or point three which was B all right even today most simulation models are too kind consuming and costly and hard to justify of course that's false or we wouldn't even be talking about simulation all right Mike Jones a business student at GSU uh, having some trouble balancing his checkbook and in this case we have a he starts with 300 bucks in his account and we're just going to simulate three months of the semester and we want to figure out what his balance is at the end of the semester so we have our our probabilities on his income our probabilities on his expenses and then we have random numbers down here for his income and his expenses and if we just plug these random numbers here and here into our uh, table we have our random numbers here 52 6 and 88 right here 52 6 and 88 random numbers here for expenses 53 8 and 97 then we use our <clears throat> tables up here to get the values that we're going to use for our incomes and expenses and just plug all that into the table here and we walk across and we have our ending balance for one period is obviously going to be the beginning balance of our next period so we have 300 we bring in 450 we spend 400 so we have 350 bucks in our account at the end of that period and we walk our way down to where we have $300 is our ending balance and so that's going to give us answer number C on the exam right there now we have all of the following are uh, are among the guidelines for good spreadsheet models except we want to, of course, we want to identify our parameters. Want to have our most select the most important things. Leave out the stuff that doesn't really matter. Everything should be clearly labeled. And we want to make sure that our parameters are not in the formulas sections of the spreadsheet. Remember, our parameters or our assumptions, we want to have those in a separate area. We don't want to build in. Uh, numbers inside our formulas that are likely to change. We want to put references to those things in the formulas. We don't want to put the parameters inside the formulas or in the formula section of the spreadsheet. And of course we want to have uh, the model uh, look good and make sure we use proper formatting. Okay. The impact on the solution based on changes to the input data are a very important part of the analysis. So remember this is What's going to happen to the solution when we make changes to the input? This is sensitivity analysis. So is the model, how sensitive is the model to changes that we might make? So we make a little change in one area and see what happens to the outcome. 